Hey everybody, it's Vaughn here from the Gospel University and today I want to talk about the practical ways to use a Nord Stage 3. Alright, now a good friend of mine, buddy of mine for over, good God, 15 or 16 years now, Sebastian Wheat over at Wheatworks, I had a video on his page about the Nord Stage 3 and there were some things that uh, I didn't quite agree with so I want to kind of make a response video to kind of highlight how you can use a Nord in practical situations, okay? So the main things we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be talking about splits, we're going to be talking about layering, all right? And we're also going to be talking about some of my other favorite um, functions of this board that I use in a pretty nifty way uh, using the dual keyboard function, which is the the on the panel B button underneath right here, that light. Now... Um, so let's first start out with um, the, the, the layering, okay? Now, this is the thing with the Nord. When you're in a live gospel setting or a live gig setting and you have a lot of sounds and you have a lot of things going on, what you will have to do, all right, is think ahead. You have to be proactive. You have to actually learn the board. The thing with the Nord is so sometimes we're so used to these manufacturers uh, preparing sounds for us um, and doing the hard work for us uh, that we don't do the thing ourselves. And in the Nord, it is required of you, even though they give you good, great programs and great stuff, but if you want to really make it your own, it's required of you to understand how all this works. So let me see here. What do I have? This is one of my main stacks. <laughs> talk about now is layering so you heard I had an EP there you heard I had a synth uh, some strings there etc etc yeah my organ section is on but it's not heard right now because I don't have it um excuse me I don't have it uh, the, the the organ pedal is all the way down okay so I'm not using the organ at the very moment okay now creating layers in this is very very easy all right, um, and basically, if you want to start with a, 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 a clean slate, a, a totally clean slate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go now, and all this functionality I can't walk through because it's in the Nord. It's, it's going to be in the Nord manual, which is pretty, pretty good. Um, but I'm going to go to an empty slot, okay? So now it says empty. N51 is empty. Oh, word, I'm playing my MIDI on, the, uh, on this here computer here. Let me check that off. Good. So, nothing. Nothing is being played right now. There's nothing. So, I want to do my normal stack, right? So, I create a program from scratch. Say I want to do, now I already have these already pre-made for me. But I'm going to show you the process. So, I'm going to go to Piano Engine. Turn Piano Engine on. Very dry piano. Nothing on it. I love that because I can create the ambience and effects I want. Now, say I want to do my typical worship um, kind of layer, right? You got a good piano, some strings, maybe a, a pad or something, some kind of saw pad. So we're going to create that. So we have this. Good. We got that going. Next. I'm going to turn on my synth engine. Now, if you know the synth engine in here, there's five categories of synth. Classic, which is the classic waves. Let me turn the piano off. You hear it? Remember, it all drive. Okay. So, you have waves. Different variations of the waves. need to use all of these this is just simple now for most of us what we're going to go i'm going to fast forward and go to sample samples where they have literal samples of instruments so in this case we have a string see how okay they play 
They get out the way, all right? Now, my release is pretty low. We're going to talk about adjusting those and tweaking those other synth settings in a second. But now, we have this, and we have the piano. <laughs> Now for me, too loud on the uh, string, so I'm going to turn the volume down. Now it's still good, but it's a little better, but it sounds too much, right? So now, knowing the synth engine of the North Stage 3, what am I going to do? I'm going to take the frequency knob, this one right here, okay? I don't got no zoom or nothing, so y'all bear with me, but if y'all have the board or schematic, you can check it out. The frequency knob has the red uh, logoing around it and it says F R E Q. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take the piano off. You hear this? This is the strings. So this is the string wide open. I'm gonna roll some of the frequency off. It gets real mellow. You hear that? Now it still has a quick release. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the release up. Release is a few knobs over under the amp envelope section. Now the release is turned up, you hear it? No sustain pedal. Now it rings free, okay? I don't want that much though. Turn it down. Turn it down. That's good. So now I have a more mellow string. Now add the piano. Turn the piano engine back on. Watch this. Okay, so now, so far I have a good. Now, what if I wanted to create uh, something more killer? Well, hoop, let me save this first before it's unnamed. So now I have a good piano with some strings. Okay, now, what if I want some kind of uh, pad thing, like a synth pad underneath that as well? Now what we're going to do, because people say you can't layer in this thing, they re you have to use... Oh, look, people want to love me now. All right. Good. Silence. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to panel B. Won't you listen? <laughs> Let me shut you down real quick. Okay, good. So we got... Um, we're going to go to panel B. Now I'm on panel A right now. Now, what I love about the panels is it basically turns the Nord into two boards, right? Two Nords, right? So, on panel A, I have my piano engine and my synth engine doing one thing. The synth engine currently is playing strings legato, okay? And I turn the frequency down. I saved it. Bang, bang. That red button that says store, save that. Click it twice. Now, that's very nice. Now, I want to go to panel B. So now, panel B, if I were to isolate them, if I take off everything on panel A and go to panel B, there's nothing, okay? So panel A is off, panel B has nothing on it yet. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to create some crazy kind of pad thing. Now, what I want is to turn the synth engine on because I know kind of what I'm going for. And I'm probably going to go for some kind of wave or super wave. This is a raw super wave. Right? The joint is powerful. Now, I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it and incorporate it into uh, the, what I had before. So now, panel B only has this super wave. Panel A, if I turn it back on, has everything else but see this super wave is kind of abrasive obviously so what i'm gonna do once again isolate and i'm going to tremolo on it. Give me a little release. Okay, good. Save, save, just to make sure. 
Go back to panel A. Save, save. Good. Now, together, it should sound like this. turn those release down to make it cut off a little faster but now you see I made a good layer right now this is pretty okay I mean I say this is a very good worshipful type joint I still might turn the super wave down just a little bit and open it up more on the frequency knob so I turn the volume of it down open it up more and let's see what happens here uh, still a little too much turn it more. oops that was the wrong one I did that time excuse me this one, here we go. That's it. Since it's still a little loud for me, I'm going to turn them down even more. Turn them down even more. Let the piano ring through once again. So now, that's a good sound. Let me say that. Actually, I'm gonna make that's a new one. I'm keeping that for myself. All right. So store, store. So now we create a layer. Now, next, well, I'm on my itinerary. All right, good. The next thing is, well, you create all these crazy sounds. How are you gonna pull them up in the gig or on the thing? What you do is using the Nord uh, computer software or just being organized on the board. What you do is you create using song mode. So you take these programs that you save and you create songs out of them. Now in our case, we're not gonna do songs. We're gonna create templates, right? Templates. So what I do now, I'm gonna pull up my song mode. Now, song mode is the left, on the gray button to the left of this middle screen here it's called song mode. Now, I have a list of songs, all right? I have my club set. When I play my club gigs, I have club mains. I have um, certain songs that are very specific, like Ain't Nobody or whatever. They get their own song list or song uh, mode entry. But right now, I have one song, Club Mains. Each song has five parts in it. And in each of those parts, there are programs that, like the one I just created, right? So if you think ahead, once again, you know you're playing a gospel gig, you create a gospel stack. So I have a gospel stack right here. If I'm playing CCM, I have a CCM stack with certain kind of pads. If I play, uh, and for the most part, it's gospel CCM and, and club gigs, right? And then uh, for my, my wedding band or stuff like that um, or anything, I have songs for those, right? But for the most part, those are pretty simple. You know, I also have my super synths, um, a song, uh, song list that comes in Nord. Very good for the 80s stuff. Now when y'all start playing your, you know, your um, Bon Jovi. Etc. Alright, that's all in there. I made, you know, I made sure I, I have those there. So, you want to take your most commonly used sounds or programs, right? Pre-make them, tweak them to your liking, then compile them into song mode. Okay, now their manual tells you how to do this thing, uh, so I'm not gonna walk through that step here, okay? But I'm just giving you a concept so y'all understand that this board is not nothing to run away from. In fact, as a matter of fact, it liberates the hell out of you because you can tweak on the fly if you know what you're doing. And if you make a tweak, but guess what? You want to snap back to your original preset? Just press the program again. So watch this. Say I'm, this is my club set. Right? And I want to do something like this. And I want to open the strings up. And I want to do this.
Watch this. I'm going to reset. I've just reset the board. Now watch the next thing I play. You see what I'm saying? Live tweak on the fly if I know how I'm going to do it. But when you want to reset it, just hit the button again. The program is pulled up. But with the seamless transitions, you get right back to square one. Now, on any other board that's going on right now, it's going to cut the sound off. Facts. And that's annoying. I don't like that. I love this because I can make dumb changes and then I could do what I want to do. Now, I didn't set up the MIDI board. But there's another thing you can do with this. Now, I showed you how to layer for the most part what, and, and create your, your sounds and so on and so forth. Um, and the same thing goes with splits, guys. If you know that there's a certain split configuration that you like on the board, you can create it in a program. It'll pull the split up. Now, me personally, I don't like using splits because I like using another function the board has, which is the dual keyboard function. So I like to take a MIDI keyboard, hook it up to this, or another board altogether, like a, Yam, a Roland or whatever, and using the MIDI settings in here, you can slave one board, you can slave the other board to the north. So if I pull up a program in here, right, it'll automatically switch to the program in the other board, all right? Now, I'm making this video off the cuff uh, for Sebastian, um, but uh, there is a, 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 a I'm going a, I'm to a make another video on how to do that uh, as a follow-up, and I'll send it to him as well, okay? But that's possible with this thing. Now, my personal rig, I use this, and I slave a MIDI keyboard to it because I use the MIDI keyboard for panel B, or rather, I use panel B for the MIDI keyboard. So for all my stacks, you see this light, there's a light underneath panel B that's lit. It's because it's set for dual keyboard function. So there's some kind of lead on top or some kind of synth on top that I would normally use in a club situation or for my gospel stuff, a gospel situation, or for my CCM stuff, CCM situation, okay? And this is going to remember all that stuff. Now, so right now, I have a panel A and panel B, right? But you can't hear panel B because it's set to go out to the other board, right? But I don't have the board connected. So, but it's still, even if it's not connected, you can't hear it. Now watch this. I'm going to take dual keyboard off, and I'm going to take panel A off, and you're going to hear what's supposed to be on the top. And this is my, my one of my synth leads. That's one of my leads for my club gigs. Another one. Uh, oh, and what, see that tweak I just made, how I turned that all off? Guess what? I made that tweak. Guess what? I go back to it. It's still there. Back to normal. Just a live tweak on the thing. You get right back to it. Next. Um, I also have the same bottom. So sometimes what I find myself doing... I like having the same main setup, but I want different tops, right? So I'll copy, I'll copy the the program, but make the tweak for the top part. So same bottoms, right? Watch this. Change it. Still sounds the same on the bottom, but watch this. The top. If I turn the the, the, the go to panel B, turn off dual keyboard, because once again I don't have it hooked up, and I play. I have my brass. That's what's going to be on my top board if I had it hooked up. Now watch this. Just click it again. I'm back to normal. All right? Same thing again. Another one. Now I got the same bottoms, but guess what? There's another lead on top. Do the same process again. Turn off dual keyboard. Go to panel B. All right. Oh, this one has the R and B lead in there. There we go. So for like when you like you're doing your rock with you. that when I'm playing I want to rock with you that's my sign lead for R&B stuff right click it again 
know what I mean? I'm back to normal. The dual keyboard thing is up. It, it remembers it, right? And this is the function. This is the, the, the flexibility of this. You can create programs because you know you planned ahead what your what your, your swag is on the keys, right? You know what you want your splits to be. You know what you want your top and bottoms to be. If you have another board, you can hook it up to this and make it slave that board, right? So you so, so some Rollins like Gaia's or some or um, FAO sixes or Phantoms or whatever, whatever. It can slave it. It can go right to the patch you want, all right, and still have the tweak ability of the bottoms. You know, sometimes I do a three board setup. I have this. I have my MIDI. It's uh, going to plan, um, going to uh, panel B or going from panel B to the MIDI board. Then I have also per program, uh, even though I have that MIDI thing going on, I have it control my Roland, right? My Roland FAO six or whatever else I want to control. So I have a three board setup, and it's all controlled right here. Easy. I don't have to go do this board, then do that board. I don't, none of that crap, okay? Simple streamline. All it takes is y'all learning how to use the board. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could tell y'all. Um, the biggest thing that's going to unlock this board for you is learning how synthesis works, okay? Learn this synth engine on the NOR. Learn how synthesis works in general, guys. When it comes to making sounds and making tweaks and learning how to use the morphs and everything, it's so beautiful. Um, and even getting some of the sound banks that you can get from Nord themselves, you can use those as educational tools to teach you how the patch was made. I love this board because I've learned how Julian Pollock or Mike Burrell or all those guys who create these sounds, how they did it. I can look at each knob, hit the monitor copy button and see what parameter was affected and to what amount it was affected, okay? So the Nord Stage 3, I love it. It's, honestly, these are the only boards I really use. I hardly use my Roland and stuff anymore, my Yamahas. I just create everything on this. If I want to get sounds from something else, I just sample it with the sample editor, all right, and put it into the board, okay? Um, and I really don't use my computers or anything like that anymore. If I'm doing a live show that has samples in it, I just set a, set the samples to the first octave or something or whatever, or set the samples to my MIDI keyboard on panel B, right? I'll do that, hook up the, the Nord to my Roland or something, have the Roland do my top sounds, and have my MIDI board or my trigger pad, my MP, Akai MP trigger pad, control all the samples for the gig, all right? Nice, clean setup, ain't got to worry about nothing. And I'm a happy camper. But this all happens when you pre-plan and you think ahead. If you try to go into this joint blind, you about to shoot yourself in the foot. All right? So I hope this helps you guys out understand the functionality and the possibilities of applying the Nord and using the Nord practically in gig situations. Once again, the main thing for you guys is the song mode feature. Create templates, okay? I have my club gigs. <laughs> piano some alicia keys or something you're right you know i don't know the damn song is yeah here i got my piano that's for club gigs if i want to get real funky with it i got some whirly caveat if you're saying oh well for this certain type of music i play i need more than just five parts there's more stuff i need well guess what create vaughn club mains that's what i have here i'll do a vaughn club mains too right so if i say i want to switch in the middle so i know i need something from vaughn club mains too for the next song i'm gonna do guess what guy switch the song Hold sustain pedal, switch the song, go to club mains two, hit the program you know you need, bang. Now, that was a uh, Ain't Nobody, uh, Shaka Khan. Uh, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? And it, and the, oh, and this one, this one has a split, right? So this one has a split in it. This one, I 
program to have that split because down here has the arpeggiator going and all that okay so actually i'm glad that mistake happened because now you guys can see how you use the splits as well okay and same thing it goes into the program same thing look ain't nobody verse two uh so ain't nobody intro ain't nobody verse two it's a little bit different so it's like So that's that. Another song, my gospel stack, right? Tender grand for the gentle moments. Got my churchy attack. Courtesy of uh, Mike Burrell. I made some tweaks to it, but I just say them the same name. Um, I have my organ on here, so when I want to have organ stuff, I have it set to live, so my draw bars are there. Do some real churchy stuff. I have my churchy piano. This is similar to what y'all do on the ADSR uh, stuff with like the, the motif and stuff like that. So, what um, I got this sound was from um, Julian Pollock. And what he did was he sampled a board that he probably did that to, and he just put it in the north. He just sampled every note. That's all he had to do. Um, he sampled, I don't know if he sampled it true to form, like each note or whatever, but I think what he did was he did one or every couple of notes, transposed them, et cetera, et cetera. And like I said, the, the possibilities are endless. Okay, guys. So, I uh, hope this was helpful. I really hope this was helpful. Um, like I said, uh, you know, CCM. I like putting that little organ in there because it's weird. Y'all forgive me for that. There's another CCM pad now. If I take this CCM pad off and go to panel B again, this is what I have on top. Now what I'm gonna do is put that on, take two keyboard out, and I'm gonna put that stuff together. Okay. Hold on, I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong thing. Go ahead, take it off again. Bang, here you go. different sound oh, that was too loud I gotta retweet that one I usually use it on top I don't usually put them together but I put the bells on top I usually don't use that together that's why it sounds kind of weird together usually um, I love one of Jolly, Julian Pollock's songs atmospheric thing um, tender grand and this one I like using a lot too for CCM all right I like that one that's another Julian Pollock sound okay so that is uh, it for me in this whole uh, Nord thing hope you guys like it hope you guys understand how it can be used you just need to learn the board, guys. Just learn the board. Don't make excuses. Learn how synthesis works. Learn how to use these little knobs. The one that y'all going to use the most is the frequency knob and the sample uh, section of the synth. That's the easiest to get started with, but learn the other stuff too. I made some crazy sounds with it, and I love it. The custom the customization is out of the uh, off the charts with this thing, and it's easy for you to get your own sound with this board. Okay? So, without further ado... I'm going to eat dinner. See y'all later. Peace. This is Vaughn from the Gospel University. If you want to learn more about me or anything like that, go to thegospeluniversity.com. Check out our YouTube channel. And Sebastian, thank you once again for allowing me to come on here and educate the folks so just a little bit about the possibilities of what you could do with a Nord Stage 3. Y'all have a good night. God bless. Peace.